This is the 80th episode of the Effective Executive Podcast and YouTube channel. And this week I was, uh, well, this weekend I was looking at some old, trying to clean up some files and do different things. And I came across uh, an article that I kept and it was from, I think, around 2016 or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I read was about this quote, which came from the Nokia uh, CEO, which was, we didn't do anything wrong, but somehow we lost. And I went back, kind of refreshed my memory of what had gone on. I knew some folks that were actually doing uh, some innovation activities at Nokia. Um, so I have some insights. I'm not sure I'll share all of those, but uh, regardless, um, I hear this sometimes in organization or something similar to it. Um, you know, we're not doing anything wrong. Why are our sales down or, you know, whatever. And uh, so I just kind of went back and read a few of the articles I had saved and, um, you know, when you look at what Steve Jobs did, obviously, a, you know, a genius a marketer, a genius, he had a very visionary in, in the things that he did. And I, I don't even attempt to try and copy anything that he does. As a matter of fact, I don't copy anybody. And I never suggest organizations try to copy someone. However, keeping track of whether something is being adopted or not in your industry, um, is something to, to, uh, keep an ear to the ground uh, on. And, uh, you know, so I was look back through these articles, uh, you know, at the time when the iPhone came out, uh, Nokia was the largest manufacturer of, of mobile phones. Um, I, I had one. I remember a lot of people had one back, back in the day. Um, and their view was that, uh, and this is from an article, not my personal insight, which, like I said, I probably won't share, uh, was that the uh, iPhone was a, ni a niche manufacturer. Uh, they didn't really see I the iPhone as a threat. They thought some of the things they were working on were going to be much better, uh, uh, something along that line. And then we look at also companies like Research in Motion that had the BlackBerry. You know, I remember I had a, a BlackBerry when I was a chief information officer uh, in uh, uh, the family uh, social services and administration here in the state of Indiana. Um, Blackberries were easy to use. Um, I could, couldn't imagine that there would be anything better, right? So uh, they kind of took the approach too that the iPhone would be something that wouldn't be really adopted. They thought the things that they were working on w would be um, better for the market. And then another one, which is Steve Ballmer uh, at Microsoft, he didn't really, he's, he basically said no chance that the iPhone would capture any significant market share. So these are all uh, organizations that were kind of at the top of their game at the time that the iPhone came out. And uh, Steve Jobs, uh, you know, and this can happen, you know, even, even being proactive, Nokia being proactive, you know, which I think kind of comes to the, we didn't do anything wrong, but somehow we lost, you know, they wound up being purchased by Microsoft. And uh, you know, I think organizations maybe think they're doing all they can, um, and they really aren't. And, and especially in large organizations, it's very difficult to uh, get things to happen very quickly uh, in organizations because, you know, they're doing so well. Um, and, uh, you know, those that don't innovate uh, will be left behind. I mean, uh, I, I, you've heard me on this uh, podcast and YouTube channel talk about the importance of innovation, that you have to proactively innovate, but it doesn't guarantee your success. You know, if you get somebody like a Steve Jobs in your industry, you know, it could be that, that uh, you're, you're, you're not even going to survive, or if you do, very... Uh, on a smaller scale than maybe you would like. Um, so, but, but here's the thing. Um, I, I can tell you 
from having seen multiple companies go through with competitors to come out with new products and services, um, not being proactive will eventually lead to failure. Um, and, and some of these things don't have to be, you know, large scale changes that I've talked about also. They can be incremental things that are happening in order to make your service better, your product better. Um, but you know, I think you also have to have kind of that big idea, something that's out there that's very different than, than what you have. And, and obviously you need to uh, be aware of what's going on around you with your competitors, not to copy them, but to see if you come to up with something better. And there will be something better than the iPhone at some point. Uh, now, whether Apple comes up with it or not, I don't know. Um, but uh, I, they're certainly in a good position. They, they've got lots of money to be able to research things. And I know they're very proactive in coming out with kind of the next generation of things. Um, but somebody could supplant them. You know, there could be another Stephen Jobs. And not necessarily from the United States either. It could be from Singapore or, you know, India or someplace like that. Um, I think the United States is still the most favorable place for innovation, but I, I see that being, uh, kind of, uh, dismissed also over time because of the thing, some of the things that are happening, uh, with our society and, and with our government, um, you know, the, these movements towards, uh, things that really aren't important. Uh, on a grander scale as far as being able to be competitive in a marketplace. And I think people have kind of lost their way. And I've seen, you know, and I've talked about ESG and, and some of the things like that in previous uh, episodes. But uh, uh, like I said, it just came across the article. I thought I'd spend just a minute on it uh, this week in this episode and, and just kind of remind people that, uh, you know, there is a mentality that exists that you're doing the right thing. Um, but, uh, they're, they're, they're doing things right, but they aren't doing the right thing, which obviously gets back to being an efficient executive versus being an effective executive. You really have to push yourself, uh, and being proactive, proactive in your innovation in order to come up with really, uh, th new products and services that, that could wow, not only, uh, your customers, but also your employees. Having that pipeline of new ideas is, is so important to organizations. Otherwise, somebody else will. That's the bottom line. That's what I wanted to talk about this week. Catch you next week.